and it, uh, it looks different almost every time it manifests. Mm -hmm. So um, it's always very fulfilling when I run into somebody like that or right. they um, seek me out, write letters to me, and I always answer those letters. So that was always a, a wonderful part of my career, an unexpected part of my career, when I left the microphone where you couldn't see me mm -hmm. in radio and then was on the microphone on TV, mm -hmm. that's right. when people started and to see the difference. As with every other 14-year-old, myself included, this gentleman to my left <laughs> had a big crush on you. Oh, yay, yay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Oh, I'll blush. It's very nostalgic, but I, I like nostalgia at the same yeah. time. I don't like anything that's more modern, I guess. Yeah. So, so it's like, it's a, it's a nice, like, blast from the past kind of oh, thing. Oh, really Ryan, cool. that's so cool. So, and you were coming of age at 14. Uh, at, when I was 14, I was coming of age, yeah. And you were watching Brie Walker. I was watching Brie Walker. Things were a little different going through my body. So yes. <laughs> it's like, wait a second. <laughs> because when yeah. I watched Tom Brokaw, I, I watched Brie Walker. It's two in different your puberty. <laughs> Pardon, Mark, you frightened me to talk over yes. you there. No, no, I, I was saying when I, I, at 14 when I was watching Tom Brokaw and watching you, it was two different sensations. <laughs> oh, thank goodness. And uh, Ryan got a booty call, but... Uh, yeah, I don't know what that was about. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. Ryan, uh, I, I was uh, actually, uh, San Diego uh, factors us into this because the first time, this is how, this is the nicest man in comedy, which comedy's full of a bunch of asses, but uh, the first time I met Ryan, or I recall meeting Ryan, we drove to San Diego to do the Madhouse. Oh, yeah. Madhouse is a great club. Uh, Port Plaza. Port Plaza in downtown. Oh, yeah. Port Plaza ain't what it used to be. I bet not. It's I remember when Port Plaza was new and shiny. Grand yes, new, the first year they opened up. 1985. Uh, at Channel, exactly, at Channel 10. Yeah. We were out, uh, you know, Calibo, Michael Tuck, mm -hmm. uh, Adrian Alpert. These are all names that, you know, we Some might remember know. from San Diego. Um, Margaret Rabbit, we were all uh, there doing the Christmas at Horton Plaza, yeah. the first Christmas at Horton Plaza, which was a spectacular deal. I guess it is all different. It's, it's less than spectacular. It just got sold actually yesterday. The mall did. Really? Yeah, Westfield Jump. Uh, oh, jump it's going to be a Westfield. Oh. No, Westfield Jump Ship. They owned it and they, they sold it. So they sold it to some developers. So the rumor is it could be torn down. What? So that's the rumor. But well, I, I hope they don't tear down the Madhouse because that's a great club. But we were we drove down in your car. Oh yeah, when I had the car. And <laughs> after the show, Ryan was wearing a Ghostbusters T-shirt because Ghostbusters is his favorite movie. One of my favorite movies, yeah. The original, so, yeah. So much so that even when the remake came out, initially you said it was good. It was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, 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 hopes. <laughs> I had high hopes. No, and you saw it. You're like, it I liked good. it. I liked it. I did. And now, I watched it again. It's. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't stick. Kate McKinnon's still good, but yeah. Kate McKinnon's is, is good. She's good in it, but it just doesn't stick. It just yeah. doesn't have the same. I guess again, I have nostalgia, so I kind of like that. How the '84 film just totally tells like a shoestring budget, and they try to put it together. And really, because I thought that was a big budget for the time. Not, not too big at the time, because well, they still had like miniatures and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but that's that was the technology at the time. Yeah, but it was still very campy. They didn't know where to go with it. And the studio didn't know what like if it's an idea hit. Like, they were kind of afraid before they were testing it for the audience because it was a project that Dan Aykroyd wanted to do for a long time. Right. Blah, blah, blah. But he was bankable. They all were. Yeah. They were bankable, but they, the, the original people they wanted, they could Belushi. get Belushi, Eddie Murphy. Right. So, um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that's just one of my, I mean, that and Beetlejuice, surprisingly, are the two oh, favorite, Beetlejuice the two favorite movies as a kid. Yeah. So. Which is weird because i got to be honest, both those movies, they really rely on one performance. You take Bill Murray away from Ghostbusters, you take Michael Keaton away from Beetlejuice. It's not the same. They're no. not that funny. They're yeah. not funny at all. Yeah. And you can tell if they both improvised. Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, with, Especially uh, Murray. Oh, Murray and Keaton, actually. Yeah. If you look at Keaton's uh, movements on uh, Beetlejuice, of everything he does and how he touches Gina Davis and Alec Baldwin, right. that's all improvised. And you can totally look at both actors and how uncomfortable they are with Keaton because <laughs> Keaton was just <laughs> off the rails the entire time. So... But yes, Ghostbusters. I took my shirt off for that, yeah, that so girl. <laughs> you gave your you gave your shirt. Yeah. To a to a girl in San Diego. I did. Did you get laid? No. He wasn't even looking for that. No, I didn't. He just was. She wanted my shirt, and I gave it to her. And I'm so, we're all sitting oh, there like, you what? are a nice guy. <laughs> I know. Like, you what didn't are you doing? Even ask for anything it was for a chilly it. night too. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, you were freezing the rest of the night. Like, yeah. why'd you give your shirt? And then <laughs> we drive back, and you had like some some raggedy car at the time. No yeah. offense. And, no, and and we're driving back, and it's like 2, 3 in the morning. 
Now, I have to work the next day. I would love to think better than take a nap. But the other two guys are like <laughs> snoring. So yeah. I stay up because I know you were tired. I and I wanted to make sure. And we just yammered on about pop culture until yeah, we got, we were. Until no, we got all home. Yeah, we were. All the way back to the valley. <laughs> Otherwise, you would have fallen asleep and we would have died. Yeah. So. Don't do those drives anymore. So. Yeah. Thank God. But this man has hosted shows of Liquid Soup. All around the valley. They call him Valley Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the reason why was because I, at the time, I had very, very long hair coming down to here, and I grew out my beard. So there's another comic that actually, he kept calling me the, the, uh, the Geico Caveman in the very beginning. And I, well, he, how flattering. I, yeah, I, I was very annoyed by that, because I've been called that since like high school. And, really? Uh, yeah. Cause it's, just, it's my brow. So my brow kind of gives that pro magnum look, I guess. And uh, but then oh, goes, oh wow, okay, I see yeah, it now. Yeah, you see it. Yeah, uh, it's very. Oh, they don't point it out to to women. And uh, like sex, sex, I um, uh, same guy, the same comic. He just mixed it up one night and just called me Valley Jesus, and then it just stuck. And then all the comics call me that. So that's my nickname, that or Talmo. Not many people call me Ryan. So anyone that calls me Ryan is in my family, pretty much. But everyone Talmo. calls me Talmo. Or Valley Jesus, and even though this is all gone, they still call me Valley Jesus. So, or well, the man that brought back PBR. I brought back PBR because that was a very cheap beer, and I was very, very broke at the time. <laughs> and I couldn't afford any other kind of alcohol, and uh, now PBR is like seven dollars a can. So. Did you Did you remember like when oh, the hipsters yes? took over yeah. the PBR? I'm sorry. Did you remember when the hipsters took over the PBR? Yeah, it was very. Bu I I remember I can get like a 12 pack at Rite Aid for like 5.99. And I remember that because I was like in college, and we used to get a bunch of them, and it was just right. cheap, and nobody wanted to drink them. And now everyone wants to drink them. And uh, well, why PBR? Why not like Meisterbrow or Lucky Lager or some other cheap beer? Because you don't find those anywhere. Or well, Milwaukee. Milwaukee. Oh, Milwaukee. Milwaukee's that's best. Come, that's from where I come from. Yeah. Milwaukee's best. Oh, but was what? That yeah. Uh, that's what that's, we that's drank called bitter in beer. Minnesota. I just, actually, I haven't had a beer in like seven years, but uh, that's that. It's I like don't drinking know. bread. I don't like it. It, well, it's fitting. I used to drink a lot of IPAs, I guess, in college, and uh, and then I just started getting drinking the lighter beers, and that was like PBR. Because I, when I was saying earlier, I used to host shows where I just crammed down 17 beers in like four hours, and to me, PBR is just like water. It is. It's so, it's bunny piss. Yeah, it's, just the, <laughs> it's like one step above Coors Light. That's, oh no, no, yeah, Coors Light's the worst. Yeah, so no, like no. that's that's to me, so I, it's easy for me to drink. And I don't feel too drunk. Um, I'm still drunk at the time, but now, like we were talking about that, just, like I would get off of, uh, of chemo in in October, I'm gonna probably have a huge bender <laughs> right after, and have, and my bender will probably be like two beers, and I'll probably be knocked out. So. Oh yeah, you would be after well, yeah. not in it. <laughs> and and congratulations on being a survivor. Well, as of now. Well, you brought it up, so <laughs> I was I was gonna say this, but oh okay, uh, sorry. Uh, you, uh, you you you're you're more like Valley Buddha now because. So Valley Jesus. Because all my hair is yeah. falling out. Because you, you, you have cancer. I have cancer now. But yeah. you're beating it. I'm beating it. It's uh it's it's, it's crazy. It's, I did not expect this at all. It, it kind of oh, who would. It, who would, yeah. But for for my age too, I mean I'm thirty five, so thank God I guess I think I think if I got this later in my life it would have been a different story. But um yeah, it was just uh, apparently it's been brewing in me for eight months, and, and I was in kind of the denial of what it was, as in, I think any human being would be, because this is the last thing they want. And uh, I was thinking of it as anything else. So I had friends saw it, and they're like, "Oh, you eat too much gluten. You got to cut the gluten out." Oh, so yeah. everybody's got an answer, right? And that, that's that's not the case. And then um, I uh, now your hair got really long, and yeah, the cancer's uh, on your neck. Did were you intentionally trying to cover it up? Yes. Did, uh, was that yeah. because you were in denial? Or because I was in denial. Mm -hmm. People were getting worried, and my family, when I came home for Christmas, they got worried. Is that what prompted you to finally have it checked out? Uh, that, and then it was coming around April, <laughs> and then my mom saw me for, uh, she came up here for uh, for Easter, and we hung out for lunch, and I was, I was basically being, like doing this, like just hiding my hoodie. hair as much as I can, and wearing a hoodie sweatshirt on a warm day just to hide the, the, the lump in my neck. And she's like, you gotta, you gotta go, you gotta go to the hospital. And then I, I you know, first thing I went to was the uh, urgent care by my house. And then usually those guys will give you like a synopsis, like, 